Let's pick right back up where we left off in part three as we continue forward. We'll join right back in, right following the demonstration. Here we go. Give a good hand for being out there. Thank you. Okay, you ready to do it? So, what are you doing, by the way? Yeah. What? <laughs> you did so much just then, I don't remember where you started. Yeah, I did. That one I kind of let loose on, so. Can you give us uh, a breakdown at all of some of the things you used in that? Directions. Yes, <laughs> I think so. And that would be really valuable. Um, I'm going to have to watch the video to give you a bunch of a one, I think. but. <laughs> Because that one was that one was out there, man. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I was gone. Yeah. 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 And then the suggestion of and he can go faster than all of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you're going into an altered state. Oh, yourself. profound! If you're not when you're doing hypnosis, you're not doing good hypnosis. The hypnotist will go out practically as far as the subject does. Isn't that a good way to lead them there? Yes, it's a great way to lead them there. Yeah, it's the, it's, it's totally proper. I mean, I was zoned right to the floor. I mean, I, I mean, it's like I didn't feel anything either, and I, you know, I was really out. Yeah. Just makes me think of the time when you did that to me, and you were doing the volcano thing. Do you remember that? You don't remember. When well, you did this therapy with me, and after we were done, I was like, you know, I've never been hypnotized before. <laughs> now I'm watching this. It's like I was out. <laughs> I was way gone. Yeah, you've been hypnotized a number of times. I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have very profound amnesia. What's the value of the amnesia? You stressed it a couple of times. Because we did some stuff that I felt was pretty core to his personality, and I and I didn't want it reviewed. I, I wanted I wanted his unconscious just to process, um, rather than sit and think about it and why did I say what and all this stuff. I just wanted it to happen, mm -hmm. and that's the purpose of amnesia in those cases. And also notice I gave the suggestion that his unconscious would make the decision for him. Whatever it is, it right. would act in his best interest. Which is a nice general suggestion to give anyway. Especially if you've worked with someone that's had any kind of trauma or incest or rape or anything like that. You might want to block it. If they've talked about it during trance, then tell the unconscious to go back and, and, and keep secret that which needs to be secret. But to let them know when it's appropriate. You know, that way, that way you're protecting them from themselves. So it's because that's what the unconscious has done on a long form anyway. And yeah. Whoa, that flies right in the face of most traditional therapy, what you just said. Whatever. Oh well. We're supposed to bring this all out. We spend years and years and years discussing every single incident. Well, but there's the key: years and years and years versus one session in a deep trance where the person acknowledges everything that ever happened to them, and then you hit them full on consciously with all that knowledge. They can't deal with it usually. No, not necessarily. Because remember that that they're taking years and years and years sometimes to get to all that. Where I might be able to do it in one session. And then you're saying block it again. I'm saying let the unconscious make the decision. Make, let the unconscious decide whether the person can handle it. But give instructions to the unconscious that as quickly as the consciousness can handle it to present it to them so they will remember. And what's the use of remembering it? Resolving it. Um, that's something that I'm personally learning from right now. When I, with the work that, that I do with Barbara and Gerardo, where they do therapy on me, um, theirs is, is, is uh, now, excuse me if I'm using wrong terminology, but it's like I get... I become more consciously aware, more cognitive understanding goes on for me about why I do what I do. And then I can allow myself to interrupt my own patterns and make changes where before I had no clue as to what I was doing. NLP tends to just go whack and you don't do it anymore. <laughs> you first you did this and now you do that and you have no clue why you did this one over here. Okay, I mean you just like one minute you're doing that and the next minute you're doing this. Okay, so I tend to find some real value occasionally in, in understanding why I used to do this. What was the value to me in doing that? That helps me to understand my core person a little more effectively. And so that's something I'm, I, and Barbara and Harada both feel free to speak up if, if you have more insight on that than I am sharing. But that's the best I know how to put it in words right now. Um, I, I don't know how much more to tell you. I, I, don't know how to tell you. I, I believe in what you're saying. But I was trying to think, now you've got it, you know, you remember it, and it sounds like you're bringing it out at times that are, you're not bringing the whole thing out where it will overwhelm you and crush somebody down. But you're bringing out parts and helping to understand it. Then what do you do with this conscious stuff? Oh. Can you get creative with it? Could you change it into something? Oh, else? heavens, yes. For example, pick, yeah, pick, well, a, negative, pick a negative thing. So let's, let's take uh, rape, okay? Yeah. Well, fine. All you have to do is go resolve the rape. Do collapse anchors against it. Yeah, yeah. collapse the anchors against the rape, but it's gone in their mind. 
I mean, it's like, they'll remember that it happened, but they don't care. They'll be like, so what? Yeah, it happened to her. Well, I mean, I guess it was me, but, I mean. And could that, though, be brought up to the conscious to remember? Yeah. To use to, to create somebody who wrote a book about it or help other people? Sure. It, or you bet. Like you bet. So, like, okay. You bet. Yes. However, once again, I would let the unconscious decide when the proper time is for all that. Let, let, make sure that you're not playing God, is sort of what I'm saying. In other words, that you don't bring something up, think it's resolved, because after all, you did the work. <laughs> you know, right? And then the person isn't really fixed, isn't really okay. Usually what I've found is they remember. What they say is, wow, I've got fleeting images of, of these of this problems in my life, you know? And I feel like we've talked about some of them, but they're not real clear yet. That's a really good sign, as far as I'm concerned. I go, great, well... I want to respect you and your unconscious and just let whatever clarity is there, let's let that be what's right. And But you think about it and you work through it and you tell me you know, what you come up with and we'll work through anything that you come up with in the future. Well, don't you feel that you work on certain things at various stages of your life? And yes. If you worked on before, you worked on a certain way and then you're in a different stage of your life and there are different things that come up that that NLP work that you might have done two or three years ago took care of then, but you choose maybe to work on A different level. Maybe you choose to gain some understanding as to where the, the major patterns in your life are going or where they came from or whatever. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. Makes you want to be at that clinical training. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. <laughs> All right, Kendrick, back off. Um, yeah, it's, it, but, but it does. That, that is the kind of feeling that, that happens. And for any of you that went through this just now, when, when I did it, if you were kind of like playing along with him, you may have felt a lot of strong emotion yourself. You, know, you may have felt like, wow, something's really changing inside me, or something's really moving now, and I, I can make some real progress, or something like that. And that's probably how you felt, isn't it? Yeah. How do I know that? Because I felt it. Yeah. Break down the strategies. Basically what I did, I induced trance by recalling other times of trance. I used massive presuppositions to get them into trance. Once he was there, I told him he could go deeper the next time, anytime he wanted to. In fact, now all he has to do is say deep trance in his mind and he can go there. Have you tried that yet? Huh? <laughs> You just tried it. Did it work? You felt yourself slipping away? Good, okay. Now, the next thing I did is I decided I would help him just based on what I knew of him to have more confidence. So I elicited you know, confidence responses from him and patched it in to, with general suggestions about having more confidence in his future and getting the kind of success he wants. Again, just general hypnotic language patterning. And beyond that, I forget. I'm sorry, I'd have to go back and watch the tape. But I'm happy to do it. We might have fun sometime. Maybe we'll all get together and, and, I'll, and we can watch the tape together or something and I'll tell you what it is I'm doing as I do it. Because yeah. I'm totally blank now. Now the amnesia is set into me. I've, I've wiped out my own mind about it. Uh, truly, if you're doing this, one of the things you want to do when you're done is sit right down after the client leaves and write some notes about what you did in the session. Otherwise, you'll have no clue an hour later. Are you in uptime all that time? Big time. Okay. Yes, uptime like... Like, all out. I don't, I'm not aware of even thinking or feeling. I'm only aware that my mouth is, is wagging. <laughs> it's, it's following an outcome that I, I consciously no longer even follow. Is the ratification another way of doing the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1? No. Nice no, the ratification is designed to make the person realize, oh, I'm in a trance. Oh, this is a time when something special can happen. This is a time when I can really uh, get some change to happen in my life. Because it seemed like you went through, your colors change, your voice has changed, your breathing's changed, and you're going It, it may have that effect, too. Yeah, it may have an overlap effect, too. Do you remember me doing that to you? Doing what? <laughs> <laughs> um, telling you that at this point, in the first trance, your breathing has changed, and your face coloration has changed, and it's become more relaxed. And Remember that? Yeah. What was your feeling? What was your What were you thinking when I was saying that? You said that exactly when I started listening up and I became more relaxed. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you folks need a break? Or are you ready to do it? Um, I need a break. Break.
All right, let's take a few minutes to kind of come back out of trance, and then I'll have you do it, okay? This was a very valuable question and answer session. It was very much like entering into my mind and getting a profound insight into how to do this. It's very much worth taking a few minutes to go through it again. It's only 10 minutes, and if you really absorb this, doing trance with others will be much easier. This answers many questions you might not even realize you had. A good hand for being out there. Thank you. Okay, you ready to do it? So, but where are you doing? But, oh. yeah. What? <laughs> you did so much just then, I don't remember where you started. Yeah, I did. That one I kind of let loose on. So. Can you give us a breakdown at all of some of the things you used in that? Direction. Yes, <laughs> I think so. And that would be really valuable. Um, I'm gonna have to watch the video to give you much of a one, I think, but because that one was that one was out there, man. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I was gone. Well, the I, yeah. Pretty turkey, uh, yeah. Disassociation. Yeah. Yeah. And then the suggestion of and he can go faster than all of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you're going into an altered state. Oh, yourself. profound! If you're not when you're doing hypnosis, you're not doing good hypnosis. The hypnotist will go out about practically as far as the subject does. Isn't that a good way to learn? Yes, it's a great way to lead them there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's totally proper. I mean, I mean, I was zoned right through the floor. I mean, I, I mean, it's like I didn't feel anything either. And, I, you know, I was really out. Yeah. Just makes me think of the time when you did that to me and you were doing the volcano thing. Do you remember that? You don't remember. Well, you did this therapy with me. And after we were done, I was like, you know, I've never been hypnotized before. <laughs> Now I'm watching this, it's like I was out. <laughs> I was way gone. Hey, you've been hypnotized a number of times. I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a very profound amnesia. <laughs> What's the value of the amnesia? You stressed it a couple of times. Because we did some stuff that I felt was pretty core to his personality, and I, and I didn't want it reviewed. Right. I, I, wanted, I wanted his unconscious just to process. Um, rather than sit and think about it, and why did I say what, and all this stuff. I just wanted it to happen. And that's the purpose of amnesia in those cases. And also notice I gave the suggestion that his unconscious would make the decision for him. Whatever it is, it would act in his best interest. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a nice general suggestion to give anyway. Especially if you've worked with someone that's had any kind of trauma or incest or rape or anything like that. You might want to block it if they've talked about it during trance. Then tell the unconscious to go back and, and, and keep secret that which needs to be secret. But to let them know when it's appropriate. You know, that way, that way you're protecting them from themselves, so to speak, because that's what the unconscious has done on a long form anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, that flies right in the face of most traditional therapy, what you just said, from what I've heard. Oh, well. You're supposed to bring this all out. You spend years and years and years discussing every single incident. Well, but there's the key. Years and years and years versus one session in a deep trance where the person acknowledges everything that ever happened to them, and then you hit them full on consciously with all that knowledge. They can't deal with it usually. Yeah. No, not necessarily, because remember that, that they're taking years and years and years sometimes to get to all that, where I might be able to do it in one session. And then you're saying block it again. I'm saying let the unconscious make the decision. Make, let the unconscious decide whether the person can handle it. But give instructions to the unconscious that as quickly as the consciousness can handle it to present it to them so they will remember. And what's the use of remembering it? Resolving it. Um, that's something that I'm personally learning from right now. When I, with the work that, that I do with Barbara and Gerardo, where they do therapy on me, um, theirs is, is, is uh, now, excuse me if I'm using wrong terminology, but it's like I get, I become more consciously aware, more cognitive understanding goes on for me about why I do what I do. And then I can allow myself to interrupt my own patterns and make changes where before I had no clue as to what I was doing. NLP tends to just go whack and you don't do it anymore. You first you did this and now you do that and you have no clue why you did this one over here. Okay, I mean you just like one minute you're doing that and the next minute you're doing this. Okay, so I tend to find some real value occasionally in, in understanding why I used to do this. What was the value to me in doing that? That helps me to understand my core person a little more effectively. And so that's something I'm, I, and Barbara and Harold both feel free to speak up if, if you have more insight on that than I am sharing. But that's the best I know how to put it in words right now. Um, I, I don't know how much more to tell you. I, I, don't know how to tell you. I, I believe in what you're saying. But I was trying to think, well, now you've got it at the end. You remember it, and it sounds like you're bringing it out at times that are, you know, so you're not bringing the whole thing out where it would overwhelm you and crush somebody down. 
But you're bringing out parts and helping to understand it. Then what do you do with this conscious stuff? Oh! Can you get creative with it? Could you change it into something? Oh, else? heavens yes. For example, pick, pick, a pick, a negative, pick a negative thing. So let's, let's take uh, rape, okay? Yeah. Well, fine. All you have to do is go resolve the rape. Do collapse anchors against it. Yeah, yeah. collapse the anchors against the rape and it's gone in their mind. I mean, it's like they'll remember that it happened, but they don't care. They'll be like, so what? Yeah, it happened to her. Well, I mean, I guess it was me, but I mean. And could that though be brought up to the conscious to remember? Yeah. To use it to create somebody who wrote a book about it or help other people. Sure. Or you bet. Found in their own lives. You bet. So like, okay, the you bet. Your yes. However, once again, I would let the unconscious decide when the proper time is for all that. Let, let, make sure that you're not playing God is sort of what I'm saying. In other words, that you don't bring something up, think it's resolved, because after all, you did the work. <laughs> you know, right? And then the person isn't really fixed, isn't really okay. Usually what I've found is they remember. What they say is, wow, I've got fleeting images of, of these of this problems in my life, you know? And I feel like we've talked about some of them, but they're not real clear yet. That's a really good sign as far as I'm concerned. I go, great, well... I want to respect you and your unconscious and just let whatever clarity is there, let's let that be what's right. And But you think about it and you work through it and you tell me you know, what you come up with and we'll work through anything that you come up with in the future. Well, don't you feel that you work on certain things that you're at various stages of your life? Yes. That you worked on before, you worked on a certain way and then you're in a different stage of your life and there are different things that come up that that NLP work that you might have done two or three years ago took care of then, but you choose maybe to work on a different level. Maybe you choose to gain some understanding as to where the, the major patterns in your life are going or where they came from or whatever. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. Makes you want to be at that clinical training. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. <laughs> All right, Kendrick, back off. Um, yeah, it's, it, but, but it does. That, that is the kind of feeling that, that happens. And for any of you that went through this just now when, when I did it, if you are kind of like playing along with him, you may have felt a lot of strong emotion yourself. And you may have felt like, wow, something's really changing inside me or something's really moving now and I, I can make some real progress or something like that. And that's probably how you felt, isn't it? Yeah. How do I know that? Because I felt it. Yeah. Break down the strategies. Basically what I did, I induced trance by recalling other times of trance. I used massive presuppositions to get them into trance. Once he was there, I told him he could go deeper the next time, anytime he wanted to. In fact, now all he has to do is say deep trance in his mind and he can go there. Have you tried that yet? Huh? <laughs> You just tried it. Did it work? You felt yourself slipping away? Good, okay. Now, the next thing I did is I decided I would help him just based on what I knew of him to have more confidence. So I elicited you know, confidence responses from him and patched it in to, with general suggestions about having more confidence in his future and getting the kind of success he wants. Again, just general hypnotic language patterning. And beyond that, I forget. I'm sorry, I'd have to go back and watch the tape. But I, I'm happy to do it. We might have fun sometime. Maybe we'll all get together and, and, I'll, and we can watch the tape together or something and I'll tell you what it is I'm doing as I do it. Because I'm totally blank now. Now the amnesia is set into me. I've, I've wiped out my own mind about it. Uh, truly, if you're doing this, one of the things you want to do when you're done is sit right down after the client leaves and write some notes about what you did in the session. Otherwise, you'll have no clue an hour later. Are you in uptime all that time? Big time. Okay. Yes, uptime like like all out I don't I'm not aware of even thinking or feeling I'm only aware that my mouth is, is wagging <laughs> it's, it's following an outcome that I, I consciously no longer even follow is the ratification another way of doing the five four three two one no nice no the ratification is designed to make the person realize oh I'm in a trance oh this is a time when something special can happen this is a time when I can really uh, get some change to happen in my life. Because it seemed like you went through, your colors changed, your voices changed, your breathings changed. And you're going it may have that effect too. Yeah, it may have an overlap effect too. Do you remember me doing that to you? Doing what? 
Um, telling you that at this point, in the first trance, your breathing has changed and your face coloration has changed and it's become more relaxed. And remember that? Yeah. What was your feeling? What was your What were you thinking when I was saying that? When you said that exactly when I started listening up and I became more relaxed. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you folks need a break? Or are you ready to do it? Um, I need a break. All right, let's take a few minutes to kind of come back out of trance, and then I'll have you do it, okay? Okay, let's go ahead and rejoin the program where I'm about to give an exercise. I'd like you to go ahead and do the exact same exercise. Here we go. Let's do this last example, and I think we'll call it a night. Um, I want you to have practice doing it. Um, I applaud your ability to stay conscious, alert, and awake during this training. Um, it, it, I, it, well, or thereabouts. Yeah. Um, what I will tell you is that when you're done and you walk outside and, and you get ready to, to do whatever you do tonight, you'll find boundless energy coming to you from spending hours and hours in trance today. And that will feel very nice, I might add. So um, you can look forward to having that fun experience and, and uh, refresh yourself. Um, Okay, so what I want you to do now is to get into groups of two quickly. Different groups than you normally would. For example, Gerardo and Barbara don't work together. <laughs> um, and uh, find yourself in a new group of two. And I'll tell you what to do here in a second. My <laughs> home Okay. Here's what I want you to do. You're going to use the fract fractionalization technique to, to put a person into a very profound trance. Please make a couple of notes, would you please? Sorry, Randall. That was dumb of me. Step one, in the first trance you induce, it does not have to take long, by the way, just put them in there. Once they're in, tell them that each time they go into a trance, they go into a deeper one. Okay? When you bring them back out of the first one, so on awakening, suggest that in a moment you're going to put them back into a trance so that their unconscious can be anticipating that and preparing the way for them to go much deeper. What language? Can you say that again? In a moment I'm going to bring you out of trance. In a moment, I'm going to bring you out of trance. And I'm going to put you right back in in a few minutes after that. And your unconscious can begin now to prepare the way to take you even deeper when I do ask you to go back in. Just something like that. You, know, you don't have to use exact words. This will create quite a spectacular result for each of you. Okay, now, induce the second trance. That's the next step. <coughs> In the second trance, what I'd like you to do is, when they're real deep, tell them that Anytime they want to stop and go into a trance, they can do so by saying the words deep trance to themselves, aloud or, or silently. So just write the words deep trance for personal conditioning. Because this way you guys will be able to do self-hypnosis from here on out, whenever you want to. You just stop, relax for a minute, and tell yourself deep trance. <sighs> out you go. And you just slowly wake up? No, not yet. Once they've been told that, and they're, they're in the trance, the second trance, they've been told that. Now what I want you to do is give them suggestions about this whole course being really a, an awakening for them. That their unconscious mind really uses this information, studies it, learns from it. 
uses it strongly. Okay. And what else? Anything else? Oh, and then anything else that you might want to just... Oh, oh, oh. That, I'm, I'm sorry. Write the word magic. What I want you to do is tell them that, look, they've been responsible for creating a lot of results in their life. So why not let the unconscious go ahead and create positive magic in their life right now and give them everything they've been dreaming of having right this minute. Make it available to them right now. Give the unconscious permission to go out and create whatever it needs or wants for them, as long as it's positive. Then give them suggestions to have lots of energy tonight and good feelings, happiness, and bring them back. I think you can do all that in 10 minutes. Each? Yeah. Which is about how much time we have left after I give a few closing remarks. So why don't you, um, we'll do that, a uh, little bit of a, just a quick breather when you're done. I'll signal you when 10 minutes is up. Actually, I'll tell you when five is up and then 10 is up so that you'll know. So you can kind of plan your time accordingly. And then uh, really hang in there with your partner because this is a real profound thing you're leaving them with, okay? All right, please begin. You have 10 minutes from right now for the, to complete the first one. Okay, go ahead and stop now and complete the exercise. We'll be here for you when you come back. Okay, did you do it? <laughs> Excellent. All right, let's jump back into the training now where we'll talk about what you just did and then I'll point out more things for you to work on. All righty, am I on? Can you hear me? <coughs> How you like that? <laughs> How'd this work? Let's have some feedback. Can you all talk? <laughs> Do you have any mouths left? <laughs> Well, see, I'm trying to explain the experience. So. <laughs> I'm sorry, what'd you ask? <laughs> what did you notice from this? What, what was different or unique about doing it when, you, when you're doing two inductions right in a row like that? Deeper. Go a lot deeper? What else? Quicker. Quicker? Very quick. What else? I think the second time around, you're not as aware of the surrounding sounds. Yep, that, that's typically true. It's typically true. Um, did you get really good suggestions put in, like about the ability to say deep trance whenever you want to and go into a trance and all that kind of stuff? Practice with that. Practice makes it stronger, okay? And you'll love it. It's really fun. That's right. I had a deeper, I mean, a harder time trying to do self hypnosis when I was that deep on the second time around. Yeah, because your mind goes blank. I mean, you, you know, you have little consciousness left. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, which, by the way, that's the good and the bad of self-hypnosis. Self-hypnosis means you're not deep enough that you can really power in a suggestion. But, by the same token, at least you can do something on your own, and that's great. So. It would be a good idea, maybe, to put your messages on a tape, if you go that deep. Yeah. Just let that be oh, yeah. Let it just zone. Play the subliminals that you have of mine. Trust yourself. Yeah. Play, play subliminals while you're in trance? Play the ones I have, yeah. Yeah, those are powerful the ones these guys. Yeah, and just let them go over and over and over. Those are really not subliminals there. Right. I'm starting to hear right. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, we will have accomplished a couple of things that we set out to today. Do you notice how your sensory acuity is higher for normal speaking? Okay. That should be significantly different now. Okay. Second of all, you can now go out and do this. You actually are able to do more sophisticated trance and trance work than people that have been training for years in traditional hypnosis by state-run schools type things. I mean, you'd blow someone away. A hypnotist would be blown away to hear you come in and without saying the word um, uh, ca counting or hypnosis, to put, knock someone straight out in, in two or three minutes. They'd be going, how did you do that? You know, what's the secret? And you tell them there is a secret, all right. If they got enough money, you'll teach them. Um, <laughs> the odds are they can't afford you. Um, you that's right, and I get my 25% share and we're all happy, yeah. 
Um, but, I mean, so please feel free now. This is a thing where, uh, for future practice, between now and the next full day training, let me suggest what you practice on, okay? Practice on becoming fluid with your suggestions. Practice on becoming fluid with your suggestions so that you can just speak about any subject for a significant period of time without running out of things to say. You're just rephrasing and, and rethinking through the process over and over. Also, learn to speak in terms of sentence fragments and the realization that naturally occurs and the growing understanding, all of which enable us, really drive us into new areas of expertise, training, and results in our lives. We'll take a back seat to something as powerful as our ability to study and learn these communication skills. <laughs> See what I'm doing though? It's like massive sentence fragments. I never said one whole sentence, you know, at once. With a noun, a predicate, and a, <laughs> you know, it's like I just went, I just was using sentence fragments. And that new understanding, very good, that really comes along when it's necessary. Just promote the trance. Oh, big time, because it's like, when it's necessary for whom? For what? When? Yeah, it's, it's impossible to interpret totally, but when you string them together, it, are we hanging in there? You zoning out again? Yeah. Um, you see the camera go, yeah. Oh, what, 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 what? So, um, Thanks to our cameraman, Bruce. We'll give him a big round of applause here for helping us. Oh, yeah, you want to come say hello on this side of the camera? Come on this side. Come on this side. Let's put him in a deep trance and make him forget that he did. But make sure to put your clothes. You got all your clothes back on? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> That's mean. Um, okay. So those are the things to practice between now and next time. Some more homework between now and next time. Not next Wednesday, but next class. Induce trance in at least five people. Actually do something to help them. You should daily practice your own self-hypnosis by going into the state yourself. and use suggestions like they're going out of style. Link them more and more together. Say them with greater strength and authority. Okay. This has really been fun, and I really appreciate you guys being here. You know, it's funny, when I first sell the program that you're in, you know, it's like most people, they go, yeah, two days hypnosis, yeah, all this added value, I'm not sure. But then you go through it, and people are like, oh, man, now I see what you're talking about. So this is the hard part for me to, to say in so many words what the value is. But I think hopefully you see that it has a significant value. Um, it sure hell is draining to teach. <laughs> so thank you. Greetings. OK, um, I'll see you all on Wednesday. And uh, have a great weekend. Have fun. All right. Well, we've covered a tremendous amount up to this point. You should now be able to quite comfortably induce trance and work with the fractionalization technique to be able to induce trance quite deeply. I recommend you do a number of practice sessions where you start off with a suggestibility test of your choice, followed immediately by the fractionalization strategy, giving suggestions that each time they do it, they go much deeper, etc. After you've done this, let's continue on with part five.